Uh, hi, so in this video I will describe the cardiac contraction with a particular emphasis on the molecular events that take place. So this is a classic example of a cardiac myocyte with T-tubules shown here, just next to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a calcium stool. Myofilaments shown at the bottom, although realistically myofilaments are present throughout the cardiac myocyte. Some of the major ion exchanges and transporters are also shown and here on the right hand side we've overlapped the action potential shown in black with the intracellular calcium and contraction shown in red and blue respectively. So the first thing that happens is the resting cell is kept at resting memory potential at minus 90 millivolts by the sodium potassium ATPase pump. <clears throat> But then the sodium channels get activated and a huge amount of sodium floods the cell. So obviously therefore the membrane potential will shoot up from minus 70 to plus 25 millivolts. And this is called depolarization, in other words movement from negative charge to positive charge. So this huge increase in, in um, membrane potential will therefore cause L-type calcium voltage-gated channels to open up. So calcium will now rush in from the outside to the inside of the cell in the vicinity of the ranadine receptors. Ranadine receptors will sense this calcium elevation in this area here and therefore they will open up because remember they're calcium-gated calcium channels. So they will flood now the cell with calcium. Most of the calcium will bind to the myofilaments and when the myofilaments bind calcium, they will slide across, causing a contraction. So as you can see, as we increase our action potential, oh sorry, as we increase our membrane potential, we actually get a sudden influx of calcium in the cytosol, which is then followed by a contraction. Now some of the calcium is removed through the sodium calcium exchanger, which is driven by the sodium gradient. So three sodiums come into the cell, whereas one calcium leaves the cell. This sodium uh, gradient is maintained, so with 10 millimolar sodium on the inside, 145 millimolar on the outside, is maintained by the activity of the sodium potassium ATPase pump, extruding the sodium continuously, thus keeping sodium homeostasis. So, of course, the um, the next thing that happens for the relaxation to occur, calcium needs to go back into the SR and this happens via the SR calcium ATPase which is shown here. So all the calcium that's left the SR goes back into the SR. So as our calcium levels come down, as shown in red here, then the myofilaments can now slide back over each other and the cardiac myocyte relaxes and therefore the heart relaxes and can be filled again with blood.